This is Africa 54. We begin in East Africa, where Pope Francis arrived in Kenyan capital Nairobi on Wednesday on a historic visit to the continent that will seek to heal divisions between Christians and Muslims and address a fast-growing Catholic congregation. On his first tour of Africa, Pope Francis landed under sunny skies and was met by the Kenyan president Uhuru Kenyatta, as well as a crowd of fans who sang and cheered. As part of the tour, Pope Francis is also scheduled to visit Uganda and the Central African Republic. The trip has been fraught with security concerns, and the Pope is expected to spend about two days in each country and will visit only the capital cities. Both Kenya and Uganda have been targets of Islamic militant attacks, and part of the pontiff's trip will be focused on bridging Christian-Muslim fault lines. Well, for the latest on Pope Francis' visit, Jill Craig, VOA East Africa correspondent, joins me live via Skype from Nairobi. Hello, Jill. Hi, Vincent. Yeah, first, how can you describe the mood in Nairobi today? Absolutely joyful. Uh, Kenyans are very, very excited that Pope Francis has chosen their country uh, for the first stop on his first Africa tour. So along the route that went from the airport to State House, where the Pope was, uh, was headed after he landed, uh, I would say thousands of people lined up uh, cheering, singing, as you mentioned, uh, just very excited to see the pontiff, even if, they weren't, even if they aren't Catholic necessarily. They were very excited that he chose Kenya, and they see that as significant. Now, we mentioned that uh, one of the focus of the Pope's visit to uh, these countries is to bridge uh, the fault lines between Muslims and Christians. What are some of the events that have been planned to achieve this objective? That's a great question, Vincent. The biggest event that's been planned uh, to address those issues, uh, he's having a, a meeting with interreligious leaders tomorrow, and I believe that there will be Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, and Protestants at that meeting, in addition to some Catholic officials. So I think that he's trying to make a very cognizant effort uh, to bridge those divides. And, you know, today when I was talking to people along that parade route, um, or sh shall we say just the route that the, that the Pope was taking, uh, people, you know, they, they expressed uh, sort Sort of happiness that he was coming to address those things because those are issues that Kenya has seen uh, many times and also you know they we, we've even seen you know obviously in the last few weeks uh, even more terrorist attacks elsewhere so it's definitely a very pertinent issue um, and it's one that Kenyans are excited for him to address uh, and I can also say that I spoke with some Muslims today along the parade route and you know even the Muslims I spoke with said you know it, we think it's fantastic that the Pope has chosen Kenya so I just think all, all in all Kenya are very excited about this. Now, we know that uh, as, as in every other place where the Pope goes, uh, citizens also want him to address other issues very specific to their country. What are people telling you they would like to hear the Pope tell the leaders of Kenya? Well, you know, it's funny. That's, that's another good question, Vincent. Uh, several of the people we spoke to today said that they were so, you know, so proud of the way that the Pope conducts himself. They like his message of humility. And, you know, several today and, you know, also in the Kangani slum where I was uh, a few days ago, you know, people just keep saying that they hope that their political leaders can take some example from the Pope and perhaps maybe tone down their own lifestyles a bit more and perhaps practice humility in their own lifestyles. So I think that on a very practical level, people are looking forward uh, to that particular message. And I can say that um, because the Pope has continued to address poverty uh, in both, you know, obviously in the, in the tour that he took to the United States and then subsequently and in this tour, he's obviously going to be talking about poverty and helping the underprivileged, um, which will culminate in the event that he does in the Kangami slum, uh, which is one of the slums in Nairobi. I just think that all of these issues or all of these actions, uh, you know, kind of speak louder for, than words for the Pope. And I think that people recognize that and they appreciate it very much. And we know that he will pay a visit to the Kangami slums. What are the people saying there about that particular visit to that area? Yeah, they're very excited. And, you know, to be very honest with you, Vincent, people in Kangami are more concerned with the practical effects of the Pope's visit. So when you ask people, how do you think the Pope is doing? Are you excited about the Pope coming? The answer is yes, but it's because the roads have been paved. It's because their security has been improved. So, you know, it's not necessarily the traditional answer that you would expect from folks. But, you know, regardless, uh, they're very excited about the Pope coming for, for one reason or the other. Uh, Jill, excellent reporting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. Look forward to talking to you in the morning again, tomorrow morning.